This right here is a uh, PS1, my old one from when I was a kid, and this button here was broken, uh, or rather it was stuck down, and uh, I actually work as a computer technician and repair a lot of laptops, and I figured this would be pretty simple, because this is an old piece of technology, so I'm just, just going to show uh, what I actually did to, uh, to fix this, because it's working quite well now. It, basically, it wasn't catching before. Um, if we look inside here, sorry about the lighting there, when you press this, there's this plastic piece right here, which goes in and that's what lets the door up. This right here, you can't really see it, but um, there's a little button there, which, uh, which this right here engages and pushes down and that's actually what detects whether or not the PS1's uh, drive door is closed. So if you ever wanted to run one of these with the thing open, you would just need to press that down when you actually start it up and it would in fact start and run with the disc tray open. <clears throat> anyway, uh, what I did was I turned it over. I didn't actually watch a guide for this and there's six screws along the bottom. Uh, I originally thought that the uh, warranty void if removed screw was under here, which it's not. So if you don't want to damage the labels, don't remove this label. But rather, there's actually a sticker that says warranty void if removed here at the top. And there's another screw under that. So you need to take that off and then remove that screw. The screws on this unit, uh, are difficult to remove. Uh, it's like they're just threaded straight into the plastic. If you've ever uh, worked with desktop computers, they're kind of like fan screws. So you're going to want to make sure you have a proper size screwdriver. They're just normal Phillips screws. They're reasonably small, but I'm using the largest bit on this precision screwdriver. And you're going to have to really torque it like uh, to get them out. So if, <laughs> if you're having trouble, uh, that's normal. It's just that's just the way it is. And the top cover comes right off. Um, all the gubbins and stuff inside the unit is down here. There's a circuit board under this. None of this is actually uh, screwed down. It's all held together by the case. But yeah, if, if any of that comes apart while you're doing this, it's uh, it just slips right in there. It just just wiggle it around till it goes in there, and it just it's literally held in there by the case. There's no screws. Anyway, let's look at the button here. So this is the top cover. So your power button's over here. The power button just presses down and uh, and engages with this uh, switch here. And the switch itself has the spring and stuff which holds the power button up and down. This right here is the actual uh, eject button, which is a problem. Um, you can actually easily dismantle this. There's actually two little uh, catches here. There's one there and one on the other side you can't quite see here. And you just push on those like this and it comes out. I'm going to do that really quick and cut away because I can't do it with one hand. You might have to work with it a little bit, but it will come out completely undamaged. See, it's just got these two little catches you push on like this, like a battery release door or something on a lot of electronics. And then this is the actual mechanism, which uh, which opens and closes the uh, the device. Basically, how it works is uh, as long as this isn't damaged, you should just be able to. It might just be knocked out of place, like mine was. Like this was, uh, this was stuck up because this like popped out somehow. But basically, see this ring piece here, that acts as a plastic like spring which basically what happens is there's like a, a sear in here. You can see it right in the middle there sticking out. And when you press the button, it pushes down into the center of this mechanism, which just pulls it this way. You can see it kind of moving under my thumb there. And that's just how the button works. It's not complicated. Um, there's no, uh, it doesn't toggle or anything. It literally just needs to press down to lift the lid up, which then depresses the button that I showed you before that detects whether or not it's closed. So, uh, once you're in here, 
you just need to verify that this mechanism is correct. This will come out of here. Like if you push on it, you can pop it out over this. And you should just be able to mess with it until it's in there correctly. So I would just kind of, uh, I just kind of pushed it and got it up above this little piece here that holds it in. And then just pushed it back down in there and then it appeared to be working. Then you can literally just pop the, uh, the button back on. It, I believe it goes this way and it only goes in one way. There's two little posts that push into two little uh, holes that are in the mechanism itself. And that's that. Now if we look at the mechanism, sorry for the camera here folks, you can see it's working now properly. And mine somehow got stuck down. I don't know. I think somehow that mechanism moved like too far. Uh, I don't even know because it was <laughs> it was stuck down, but the uh, sear here that keeps the lid closed wasn't out, which is weird because you would think if it was. I don't know. I guess if it was stuck down, it would disengage that. So I'm not sure. If somehow it was stuck like this. And I just took it apart and it all snapped back together. If yours is screwed up, I don't know if they sell parts for this, but you can start it just by pressing that button that's underneath that sear, and you're fine. But yeah, when you when you put this thing back together, just make sure that uh, this CD drive, which is held on with these rubber grommet things, matches up with these posts. See, there's there's a post there, one there, and then there's a third one on the other side. So you just got to make sure it runs over those, and it should be... Uh, fairly clear here and it's gonna be wiggly I mean it if you've owned one of these you know that it wiggles around in there and it literally just held there by gravity it doesn't attach to anything which is uh, typical for something like this I think <laughs> I'm not sure about all of disk drives but I know these simple ones that seems pretty typical then you just gotta flip it back over and then uh, put those six screws back in and you should be good to go. But yeah, the buttons are working properly now. This is a little, feels a little fragile, but it's, it's pretty strong. There we have it.